Hi first graders, my name is Mrs. Holmes and I'm going to be your foundations teacher this year. I think most of you remember foundations from last year, right? A teacher came into your class and we learned um, some new things and we played some games and we sang some songs and so that's what we're going to do again this year. Um, so today I wanted to start off by reading a story and it's a silly story about a dinosaur and I thought it could help us start off the school year right um, by teaching us what it means to be a good friend. So those are there's a couple of things I wanted to talk about today. I wanted to talk about being a good friend. And in foundations, if you remember from last year, when we learn new words, we often learn how to do the sign. So when we're talking about being a good friend, this is what the sign for friend is. We make two little hooks with our fingers. Can you do that? And we hook them together. Friend, okay? So part of being a good friend is being kind, right? And kind looks like this. Kind's a little tricky. You're going to put twos up and you're going to put some thumbs between your twos. Got it? You're going to put your hands on top of each other. And you're just going to come like this. Kindness, okay? We're going to talk about kindness and being a good friend. And to do that, the first thing I want to do is read a story, okay? So let's read a story and then we'll come back together and talk about what we're going to do next. Okay, friends, the story I want to read today is called we don't eat our classmates. Now, does this look like a normal kid? What kind of student is this that's going to school? Looks like she might be a dinosaur. So let's see what happens. <clears throat> Penelope Rex was nervous. It's not every day a little T-Rex starts school. All of you are starting school this week. Were you nervous? Were you like Penelope Rex? She is feeling nervous. There's her dad and there's her name up here, Penelope. I'm gonna pop this extra piece there. It's gonna be a hard to read. And it says, what are my classmates going to be like? Will they be nice? How many teeth will they have? This was very important. So there she is. You can tell by her face that she's feeling nervous. Penelope's mom bought her a new backpack with ponies on it. Ponies were Penelope's favorite because ponies are delicious. Penelope's dad packed her a lunch with 300 tuna sandwiches and one apple juice. She's got a pony on her lunchbox too because ponies are delicious. Finally, the big day came. This is Penelope's school. And Penelope Rex was very surprised to find out that all of her classmates were... Where are they gonna be? Children. So Penelope is a dinosaur and she's going to school with children. Hmm. So she ate them because children are delicious. Penelope Rex, said Mrs. Noodleman, we don't eat our classmates. Please spit them out at once. So she did. <clears throat> you can see that they're all in her mouth. There's a shoe hanging out there. She's gotten in trouble from her teacher. She's not being a very good friend. It was not the best way to start school. Still, Penelope was determined, determined to have a good first day. Look at all of her classmates. How do you think they feel about Penelope? Do they want to be her friend right now? Ew, they're all covered in spit. Not a good first day. She tried hard to make friends at recess. Let's hear it. Let's see what she's doing here. Is she trying to be a good friend here? What is she trying to do? Is she still trying to eat her friends? She is. She finger painted some of her best work. What did she paint? Oh dear, Penelope, that doesn't look very nice. She even saved Griffin Emery a seat at lunch and she says, you can sit here. Where is she telling him to sit? On her plate? What goes on our plate? Things that we eat. Penelope, we don't eat our classmates. Penelope started to notice everyone was making friends. It was lonely. All of her friends 
are playing together, but look, they're hiding from her, and they're over on this side of the rug. She feels kind of alone. But has she been being a very good friend? When she got home, her dad asked about her first day of school. I didn't make any friends, Penelope cried. None of the children would play with me. Penelope Rex, her father asked. Did you meet your classmates? Well, maybe sort of just a little bit. Here's her dad. He says, sometimes it's hard to make friends, said her dad, especially if you eat them. You see, Penelope, children are just the same as us on the inside, just tastier. This gave Penelope a lot to think about. Mm. The next day, Penelope tried really hard. But poor Penelope, she could not stop herself from eating her classmates. And look, look what has she done. It says, Mrs. Noodleman, Penelope ate William Amoto again. Mm, Penelope. And look, everybody. How do her classmates feel about her? Everybody looks afraid of her. Except Walter. Walter was a goldfish. The class goldfish. So Penelope tried to make friends with him. Will you be my friend? I wonder what Walter will say. Chomp! Eee! cried Penelope. He's eating my finger. Wah! Walter bit Penelope. Oh dear. Hmm. Walter bit Penelope, and Penelope has been eating her classmates. I wonder if this will help her at all. Once Penelope found out what it was like to be eaten, she lost her appetite for children. That means she stopped wanting to eat the other children. Look, her fingers all bandaged up. She stopped eating her classmates, even when Cece Woodman spilled barbecue sauce all over herself. Why would it make it harder not to eat Cece when she had barbecue sauce all over her? Does barbecue sauce make things more delicious? It does, but even then, Penelope didn't eat C.C. Woodman. And soon Penelope made friends. Oh, she's playing hide and seek. She made brownies for her class. Ooh. Now, even when children look especially delicious, she peeks at Walter and remembers what it's like when someone tries to eat you. And Walter, the goldfish, stares right back at her and licks his lips. How does Penelope feel? She's scared, right? Because dinosaurs are delicious. <laughs> that is a very silly story. That story is just supposed to teach us about what it means to be a good friend. And I think that the idea of that story is that we should treat other people the way that we want them to treat us. So if we want other people to treat us kindly, we treat them kindly. And if everybody does that, then everybody's kind. Okay, so one of the things I wanted to talk about really quickly before we go is we're not, we're in school, we're all on our computers, right, at home. Um, but it's still important to be kind. And I wanted to talk a little bit about what we can do to be kind um, while we're in our virtual classrooms, while we're in class on our computers like this. So there's some things that are a little different about being kind here than they are about being kind when we're in school. Like if we're in school and I'm sitting next to somebody, it's important to keep my hands to myself, right? To not touch other people's bodies. But we don't have to worry about that right now because we're so far away from each other, we can't touch anybody else's bodies. But one of the things that we can do is we can be in our space and be ready to learn. We can make sure that we are muted there's a little button down in the corner to make sure our microphone is off so that when we talk, it's not disruptive to everybody in the class. We can stay in one spot and not carry our laptop all over with us because that makes it hard for people who are trying.
to listen to us or just trying to talk. And we can be kind in our words to other people when it is our turn to, walk, to talk, to use kind words and be a good cooperator, okay? So I know this year is a little weird and we're all trying to learn how to work on our computer and hopefully we will be back to school together soon. But for right now, we can all be good friends and remember what it feels like when somebody treats us not kindly and always treat people how we want to be treated, okay? I look forward to seeing you guys in the classroom.